Well, sure. We've worked so hard over the last eight years to build the best possible mapping tools at Google, ranging from Google Maps, Google Earth, satellite photography, street view, underwater street view, everything you could imagine. But it occurred to John Hankey, who's one of my co-founders, that maybe there's some kind of thing to do with a map that's, like if a, if a map is a uh, encyclopedia or a dictionary, maybe there's romance and mystery and adventure and, and drama. And so he, went, well, he set up a company, Larry Page funded him to do that, to explore what can you do with a map that isn't about a map, map data, to make people happy, to explore the world, to get outside and walk around to see things. Not that you do it at your computer, but you actually do by experience. So that's what Niantic Labs is focused on, and they have two products now. The first is called Field Trip, and the second is called the Niantic Project. Sure, Field Trip is a tool that takes the mapping experience at, at Google, which we made very rich, not just a map, but you could do a search for history or sports or restaurants or hotels, and we'll show you markers. Well, imagine if you were walking down the street and there was a historic thing that had happened. Say, Benjamin Franklin created this building, or, or whatever event, you didn't know that. <clears throat> well, you wouldn't know to search for Benjamin Franklin at that spot, you wouldn't know. But we could know, using your mobile phone, where you are, and can search into a big database of interesting things and tell you, you know, this is one of the oldest schools in the country established by Benjamin Franklin. Or this building, Cornerstone, was laid by this great person. And it could be other things, like uh, if you walk down the street in Philadelphia, we, uh, Field Trip would buzz and tell you, right around the corner, that's where Rocky ran up the steps in the Rocky movie. And so maybe you didn't know that. So we have the places of all scenes that were filmed in public locations of movies. And so you walk by them, it tells you about them. We have places of all the historic markers. We have historic downtown things. If a building used to be something different, we tell you. If a, there's a bank in San Francisco, if you walk by it, it buzzes, and you open it, it says, this is, the, well, this is a different bank, bank, and when it was, it's the one that Patty Hearst robbed with the Symbionese Liberation Army. So there's history, there's news, there's sports, facts. So it's a, it's a personal discovery. If you imagine, if you took all the guidebooks to your city that ever were written and cut them all up and located them by location and then dish them up off your phone just for fun as you walk around. That's what Field Trip is. Yes, that's an intrigue that rolls out day by day. It started the 1st of November. And there's a website called theniantiqueproject.com. And if you go there, you'll see a day-by-day -day scroll of hints and tips about what the project is. And today's midway through, and so we're about halfway through the story. But it's also a big day because invitations are starting to go out for people to actually play the, the Niantic product. And, and that's, that's uh, you know, the lucky few are getting that, and that'll roll out more and more over the next few hours and days. The idea there is that this is something where millions or maybe tens or hundreds of millions of people can engage in something that's fun, that's an action that involves going out into the real world and doing things, that has a virtual world implications, the way a game might, but also has real world implications, the way no game ever has. And I said, we'll see that play out the rest of this month and over the next months and hopefully the next year or two. It's something that'll be really be a joy for literally tens, if not hundreds of millions of people. Absolutely, if we can get people out of their computer, chair out of their normal everyday sedentary life and to explore their city and learn about it, have a great time doing it and really make a difference in the world doing it, we would love to do that. We give people health and joy of their place, a sense of Pacific pride, knowing more, more, more about their city, but also educate them about the heritage that they have all around them they didn't know about. Niantic itself was named for a ship, a whaling ship built in, in, in the East Coast that sailed around to San Francisco because uh, it was bringing miners, 49ers, to the gold rush. They all got so excited, all the crew deserted the ship and left the ship with no crew because they all wanted to go become gold miners. The ship got stuck in the mud. It, it ended up being landlocked, and they built a hotel on top of the ship. So there's a hull with a hotel sticking up out of the top of it. And over time, that's built up even more and more, and that's right next, it's underneath the parking lot, next to the Transamerica Pyramid. And there's a little sign that says, under this parking lot is the bow of the Niantic, the ship, you know. And so it's fascinating to know that, but you would never know that. And you wouldn't know to look at the sign either because it's way in the back. So we thought all of those little facts, people should know those in their lives. We should bring the world to people. We already solved the problem of taking all the people of the world to a map. We have a billion users of our maps. So a billion people, there's only a few, few more than that online, a billion people are using Google Maps to find out all the important facts of their daily life when they're searching. We want to take the other times when they're not searching and tell them something great happened here and you'd like to know about it.
Well, we worked with uh, the Pennsylvania State Board of Tourism uh, a few years ago to put all these Pennsylvania State historical markers in Google Earth. So everywhere there's a marker you could click, it would put up a, a sign, it would tell you, this is where this battle happened, this is the people that were involved, this is the story of it. And click here to go to the previous battle, click there to go to the next battle. And what, it worked, but what we thought was, what if we could tell them when they weren't looking for famous political battle locations? What if we could hint to people, something wonderful, a marker happened here, something interesting happened here? And that's, that's the kind of thing that we wanted to uh, expose people to and educate them about. I met today for a field trip with one of the companies based here in the city that provides the content for field trip. And they're, they're so excited to see that. It's, they, they explore all the things in Philadelphia that are not known, kind of like the hidden treasures of the city. And they write stories about those, and those show up in field trip. So as you walk around, the most unknown but fascinating things come to light. And I think doing that, maybe you could bring business to them someday. Maybe you see a hundred wonderful things, and they, you can click to maybe get a personal tour. I, I don't know. And we haven't really thought about the commercialization of it. We've thought about the, uh, basically the appeal. How we make something, um, like how would Angry Birds be fun to play, and later on you sell Angry Bird toys? You know, it's, first it has to be fun. Don't worry about selling something. Make it fantastic. Uh, so that's where we are right now. We're in the, you know, sort of have the world fall in love and have romance with these products we're building, and then make it worth their time and really valuable to them. And then maybe someday we can find some useful way to tell you about things. For example, we could tell you the top restaurants. If you walk by one of the top restaurants, you could say, I really like Swiss food, and I, I never get a chance to have Swiss food when I'm here. But if I, if I tell the program that, maybe it'll tell you when you get near Swiss restaurants. Well, certainly none of us expected the tremendous popular success of Google Earth and Google Maps. We have a billion users now, which is a great responsibility. All we knew was that we could make something magical happen, that all the pieces were coming into place, that if we did them all just right, like enough people with instruments, that we could make a composition, an orchestra would be beautiful. We, we kind of imagined it would be beautiful. We knew we would like it. We didn't know that a billion people would like it. But we're not surprised, I guess. It makes sense. We humans own the Earth more than anything else in the world. It's our planet, it's our spaceship through, through the universe. It's our, it's our all, whole race is here. And so it, it's natural you'd want to really see what Machu Picchu looks like, and you'd really want to know where your grandmothers were, your grandparents lived, and you'd, you'd, all these things, they're more than just curious facts. It's, it's, it's part of your personal life. And so it's natural people like that. We're pleased, but we're also humbled and, uh, and sort of amazed all at the same time. It's like having an album and you like the music and now it's a hit album and you think, wow, they like it too, that's so wonderful. You know? So as far as what's next, the big change that we had at Google over what anybody else had thought about before was the idea that a map could be a conversation. So if you use Google search, you kind of think, you're not really talking to Google, but you're kind of chatting with Google search saying, shoes, no bigger shoes, no furry shoes. You know, you're kind of in this dialogue about what you really want and you don't even know until you see the choices. and you. Finally figure, I really want shoes like this. Then you see all the listings of the popular ones. That's a conversation where you guide it and all the information is available to you. Well, we made a map that was a conversation like that. When you look at something in Google Earth or Google Maps, you see the place, you see the roads, you see the nearby businesses, you can find out hours of operation, you can click to zoom in to street view and see the front of the store, you can get directions and you get navigation, you can, you can get reviews for restaurants and Zagats. So, so you're really, having a conversation with the map about places. So you anticipate what you're gonna see, you have confidence about it. So, so that, that idea of the map as your partner that you can talk to, in a sense, about your interests and get ever better answers. The more you talk, the more you learn. I, I think that was a big step over a, a piece of paper or a computer screen where you hit north, south, east, and west and it slid around. I think, I think the, the conversational aspect really transformed what people think of maps. That's why it has a, a billion users instead of 100,000 users. That was the big difference. The next step is that computers are getting smaller and lighter. Clearly, everybody wears one now and they call it a mobile phone, smartphone. Those phones, one of their smartnesses is that they know about location. That's a big part of their smartness. You, know, you can imagine your phone, you hit a button and said, I need a cab. All of a sudden, a taxi would show up because the phone knows where you are. You don't need to do anything else. Just get a taxi and it pulls up, right? So. It would, it would make sense that that relationship would become more intimate as the phone itself becomes more personal. So we've explored something at Google called Google Glass, where you wear a, 
a real tiny little glasses with a little little screen up here, and you can see the world, and we can put data to that. And so you could imagine looking around and seeing the world annotated. If you did a search for hats, then if you looked around, you'd, you'd see a, a marker that said, uh, you know, Wanamaker has hats, or you know, Macy's has hats, or you know, you could, that is, you could have searched for something, and we could tell you where it is. Or if you want directions, we could guide you. You don't have to look at anything. It's just your, your, your glasses would guide you. Uh, we could explore things like the phone knows more and more about you, not like secret things about you, but it knows like you like this restaurant, not that restaurant. You like to sit near the window, not near the orchestra, or you know, whatever it is. So it, it just automatically makes things work for you. If you walk to the theater, the tickets get bought for you. You know, there's, it becomes more of, a, of like a butler or a concierge. The, the role that the concierge plays in the hotel who plays that at home? Well, our goal would be that at home, your phone could be your concierge. Anything you want could just happen for you. You take a phone, take a picture of the restaurant and say, I want two party table for two, and you get there, it's waiting for you. you know, that, why not? We'd love to do that for you. So we're making the, the, the official mapping products ever more detailed, ever more street view, ever more accurate, but also uh, ever more intimate so that your answers are customized just for you.